Lush. I'm the executive editor of Hub Culture, and I'm here at COP26 at the Ice Hub in Glasgow, and really pleased to now be joined by Vinay Gupta, CEO of Materium. How are you? Oh, very well, thank you. Nice to, be here. nice to be here with you. So I'd love to hear, first of all, when did the climate crisis, the climate emergency, become real for you? Uh, so it was the tail end of 1995. Uh, I went to a place called The Farm in Tennessee, which was one of the kind of high points of hippie civilization. It was like the hippie equivalent of CERN. It was where they tried all the new ideas. Hmm. Uh, and I met a man called Albert Bates, an organization called World Watch, and in a weekend he completely destroyed my life. Like, <laughs> I'm I sorry about that. Well, I mean, the world isn't. But he was basically like, hey kid, there's this thing called the environment. We're screwing it up. By the time you're my age, the world is going to be wrecked. And it's going to be your generation that has to do something about this. And I was like, Ugh. and then I spent five years just noodling around at capitalism, trying to get to my feet and figure out what I was doing with my life. Mm. And I had no real ability to do anything about the problem that I understood. Then 9-11 happened, and I basically just took off like a rocket, wound up in energy policy, then wound up in defense, security, and resilience. And that was when I began to more and more and more impact on climate stuff, because at that point I was working on oil policy. Mm. Uh, so that was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good number of years before the awakening and being able to become active. So you do a lot on the blockchain, we won't go into the full history, but there's a lot of potential promise about how the blockchain could address some of the climate concerns. Tell me your views on that. So um, the blockchain is like a fourth generation system. My first year of being paid 100% in digital cash was 1999. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there were systems in play even before that. So we shouldn't think the blockchain has been the terminal form of these kind of technologies. It's the next step, we'll use it, after that there will be other things. Um, you know, maybe in five years, maybe in five years. So <clears throat> the potential that the blockchain has for social transformation is that it puts facts back in the middle of the global discourse. Right now, we're in a world which is dominated by images, right? You know, think of the lifestyle of the Instagram influencers, where they look like goddesses 15 seconds a day. Right. And they are, you know, flat broke, mooching around on budget airlines, trying to find good stuff. Right. And this is a horrible lifestyle because, you know, it's, it's better than having a job working in some horrible corporate office, but at the same time, you're being constantly asked to project wealth that you don't absolutely possess. Right. And you know that you are in a position where like, your life is to make fake stories about who you are for other people's amusement. Mm. This is a terrible idea. It's literally so much. Mm. And we're in that position because we've gotten so sort of seduced by television and film and the red carpet that ordinary people think that's what success looks like. Right. The model of success, which is like, you know, my credit card debt is manageable, I got the right amount of education for the life that I wanted, and I quite liked my school, uh, you know, I have decent relationships, my dog is happy, I even have dental insurance. Right. That sort of model of success of like just the basics of the earth are very comfortable, rather than I'm a little superstar for 500 people. Yeah. We've gotten far away from our basics, mm -hmm. and getting back to a real clear understanding that we need to be living sustainably rather than burning our psychological and our physical resources to create these bits of exterior. Right. I think that is what blockchain has the potential to do because it finally gets a, 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 you know, like the blockchain is the numbers and facts, but social media was the images and surfaces. Give me a little bit more on that. What do you mean by that? So a blockchain is not a pretty thing. Right? It's basically an Excel spreadsheet that can be simultaneously edited by millions of people and you can't overwrite anybody else's data. Right. It's a brutally pragmatic thing. It is not an easy to love technology. Um, but it's the next step for controlling people's ledgers, facts, ownership records, in the same way that media, sound, images went out through social media, went into Instagram, went into TikTok. We've had a huge evolution of what you might think of as like style, fashion, surface performance. Yeah. The blockchain is a similar evolution of much more hard, numerical, digital, legal structures. You know, technology is leveling in different parts of society in different ways. Right. The blockchain is for numbers, what TikTok is for actors. Alright, so there has been a lot of discussion about how much processing power blockchain and of course cryptocurrency, which is one use of the blockchain take. There's some movement there because that's an important discussion to have during COP26. Tell me how you see that going. 
So Bitcoin is currently running about 23 million tons of carbon a year, according to one estimate. There's a lot of contention on this, but it's certainly in the order of 23 million tons of carbon a year. Uh, which, to put that into context, what is that? It sounds like a lot of elements. Ten Las Vegas. Okay. You know, the entire carbon footprint of Las Vegas is about Bitcoin. So it's not the worst thing in the world, it's certainly not the best. Um, the new chains, thing with Avalanche, we just uh, helped the Avalanche team take their chain carbon neutral. Mm -hmm. um, they're maybe at 70 tons a year. Mm -hmm. Worst case is maybe 400 tons, the estimates are not really precise. They've just offset nearly 10 times their uh, average estimate. They're in the clear, carbon neutral. Mm -hmm. Not that. And not a horrendous process, right? If your technology is not burning 23 million tons of carbon a year, carbon offsetting is like five or 10 or 20 thousand dollars a Not really a hard thing for change to do. Right. It's kind of symbolic action because, like, for Avalanche, sort of, you know, household heating for their team probably is using a lot more electricity than their chain is. Right. Whereas for Bitcoin, they have like entire power stations which are running micro farms. Right. It's just a different class of technology. So what's the path for Bitcoin to become carbon neutral? I think it would take a miracle. Oh, really? It, well, 23 million tons of carbon. That's a lot. Offsetting that is going to cost, I don't know, what is it, $200 million a year or yeah. something? Like, that's... And is it possible, carbon. given what Bitcoin is? Well, you just have to buy so much carbon offsets right. for the entire chain. I mean, if you think of a billion dollar a year spent for Bitcoin to become carbon neutral, mm -hmm. I don't know who's going to pay that. The other possibility is that Bitcoin simply moves to be able to prove that all of the energy involved in making Bitcoin mm -hmm. is directly coming from renewable sources. Hydro, geothermal, these kind of things. How do you prove how a Bitcoin was mined? Maybe somebody can figure that out. All right, Vinay Gupta, I wish we could go on all day, but thank you very much for stopping by Hub Culture, the ice hub here in Glasgow, and I need you.